Hi guys and welcome back to OG Cars and in today's video you join us back with Penny, my Fiat Panda 169 and what we're going to be doing today is we're going to be doing sort of just a walk around of a few little things that maybe we've changed on Penny which shouldn't take too long because there's literally three I can think of off the top of my head um, and then also we're going to be doing a review of the Fiat Panda and why we think you guys should buy one if you're after a little town car. So externally we've only made two changes because I am 95% sure that my S26 plate was on in the first video we did. I'm pretty sure it was because I'm sure I mentioned it now I'm talking out loud. Anyway, external changes to Penny. We've fitted these indicators. You're probably thinking, oh there's nothing special about them. Well look at this. Wow. Um, they were pounds when I bought them with the radio so they were put on. <laughs> Another change we've made is to the rear of the car now normally these cars come with like a matte vinyl finish that sort of ends where the roof curves here and then at the end there the one on mine had been picked off obviously by a child at some point so we started to pick it off got it all off owen spent like 10 minutes both sides with the tarn glue remover and we think it looks really nice without it so we're not going to put it back on so that's the two external changes let's have a little look inside and then on to the inside and if you didn't watch our last video where we made a little bit of a fumble of it but did get it done we have fitted a uh, double din screen radio in this car so it's a seven inch apple carplay screen and we're really really happy with it um to be fair we've literally been using this car for the last weekend or two with it and it's really useful i can put ways up on there for example and it'll tell me where there's traffic which didn't help us when we were in cardiff today but it's there and you know if i used it a bit better maybe we would have been in that predicament another change i've made is this new gear gator boot um obviously this is split only very slightly they do it a lot worse sometimes but this is split slightly on the side so this came up for ebay i think it was about 20 quid didn't look that it came from italy so it took a while to get here but now it's here and it's on i'm really happy with it and it was okay-ish to fit um not too not too difficult and um, there's a few guys on youtube though so yeah that is the two changes to the inside of penny and before i forget him even though i mentioned him in the last video of penny this is mr duck and he's my little co-pilot so what's it been like to live with penny the panda for the last three months um i've got no complaints to be completely honest with you it's the perfect size for me owen and a dog so it fits the two of us in if the dog wants to come the dog can fit in if we want to go shopping the boots are good size it's cheap on tax it's cheap on insurance it's good on fuel at the moment it shows on my trip about 1400 miles i think i've probably done about 900 a thousand of that and it shows my average mpg is 47 mpg which i think for this car is really really good and i'm really happy with it and in case anyone is interested it costs about 40 pounds to fill it up today it's really cheap motoring and that's why I like it and nothing has gone wrong on this car it's not due a service but we don't know when a service was last done we have checked the oil the oil levels are all good it's completely fine but we probably will service her soon just so she's had a service and she's been renewed and I'm happy about it but one of the good things about this car was it came with a new timing belt and water pump just before we bought it so that was a big selling point what we'll do now is we'll go over reasons why we love the Panda why we think a few people may want to buy one and also tell you a few pros and cons about little things to do with them as well so point number one for the fiat panda practicality how practical is it well you're probably looking at this boot and thinking oh, that's not too bad of a size well i will give you um a comparison demonstration demonstration sure i can fit in here and if we imagine georgina upside down with her head there then she'd fit on top of herself as well Perfect. The parcel shelf won't come down. Yeah, um, I don't think, yeah, that, that might be a struggle. <laughs> God, that hurt my neck. Um, <laughs> but I'm probably like, I don't know how tall I have to be honest with you. I was going to give you guys an example, but I fit in here fine. So if that gives you an idea of the practicality of the boot, then great. <laughs> Point number two, rear leg space. I'm, I'm a short-ish individual, but I'm not that short. Short. Okay, um, I've got decent leg room in here. I've got no complaints at all. I think there's good headroom. So if you're tall, sounds a bit tinny, but there's good headroom. If you want to hang off your suit, there's a hook, so you could you could hang the. As all panda owners do, of course. Absolutely, you know all those you know all the businessmen panda yeah. <laughs> owners. Um, it is basic back here. You know, it is you roll down windows in the back, but you do have a little tweaker speaker in the door. And tweeter. You have tweaker. Tweeter. Tweeter? Tweeter? Tweeter. Anyway, I can't even remember what I said. <laughs> Is it Tweeter? I've, yeah, Tweeter. Right, okay. There's also a Does speaker. it work? <laughs> I don't know. There's also <laughs> a speaker down here. Um, and then they can fight over 
a cup holder and i say they because um it's actually a very rare option for a panda to have a fifth seat belt so this one is a four seater uh but that's fine for me because i normally only take out owen Point number three, we're back into the front and I think it is the simplicity of this car. And again, I will give it a down point for the standard infotainment in this car. It literally is exactly the same as when it was released in like 2004. And it was the only thing that was letting me down. But for a hundred-ish quid, you can go out and get one of these on AliExpress and I think it makes a massive difference to the interior. So definitely something I'd recommend. But aside that, I love the simplicity of it. Everything you need is, is here. That's all you need to do with the car. I like that this one in particular comes with the dials instead of the buttons. The buttons do sometimes go wrong. I'm not going to say that. Like, they don't. You know, this is easier, it's simpler, it's less to go wrong. And something that the Pandas get, and now the 500s do, and I don't know what other new Fiat models might get it, there you go. Started on the Panda is city steering. And I'd show you an example of it, but it would just look like I'm turning the wheels. So there's absolutely no point in me showing you that. But basically, it lightens up the steering so that when you park in your car, it's easier to fling it around. And you could literally do it with your finger. I've done it with my pinky finger before. Very easy to do the steering. Um, on this model, We'll get into models in a bit, which might confuse you a little bit, but there you go. This one does have a 12 volt, and it does also have two cup holders in the back and a little tray thing here as well. But aside that, that's about it. It's relatively simple, but I like it. Point four, um, I would say that this car has one of the best visibilities of cars in this price bracket because it's basically like a big bubble. You know, the top is just completely glass. You know, you've got window, 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 window. And it's really easy to drive. I remember I drove one of these as my first car. Um, and then I'd get into my learning instructor's car, which was a three-door Clio. And I'd always be like, the Panda's got so much better visibility. And that Panda had the teeny wing mirrors, not the big chunky ones that this has got on it. So these are really helpful, actually. They're a lot bigger, but I do find them quite ugly. And I keep debating going to buy the smaller wing mirrors. I think I'll stick with these unless a cheap pair comes up, to be honest with you all, but it's fine. But yeah, visibility on these is absolutely fantastic. And as I said, for a first car, or for me, even just for a cheap runabout, visibility is 10 out of 10 on this car. Point number five brings us on to the engine. Now, this car in particular has the Fire 1.2 eight valve. We're gonna be slightly biased on this because obviously Owen is an ex Fiat mechanic and he knows Fiat engines incredibly well. The 1.28 valve is one of the best engines you can get in your Fiat. And if you go for the late Eco of the 169, the 1.28 valve comes with a £35 road tax. And similar when you go onto the newer model of Panda, such as my mum's lounge, comes with the cheaper tax as well. But the 1.28 valve is a really easy engine to work on. Owen loves working on these. It's why he's happy there's a 1.28 valve in Charmander, for example. It's a simple car to work on, simple engine to work on, and everything is there. But you can also get different variations. So you can get the 1.1, which normally comes in the active. Very similar variation to this, but as far as I'm aware, I'm pretty sure this is what Owen told me before this, so he'll correct me if I'm wrong. They can get electrical fault problems. Um, and then you can also get the 1.3 diesel engine in the 169 Panda, and they sometimes have timing chain problems. But they do also get better MPG, the uh, yes. the 1.3 diesel does. Still a really good engine, but just keeping on the timing chains, I think they tend to go around 100,000 miles, just as a guess. There you go. Point number six is to do with models, and obviously this is the Fiat Panda 169 model, but what we mean is the different models that you could get within the 169. And what I like is that they've sort of kept it very similar to the original Mark I, Mark II Panda, where they'd release these funny special editions, for example. Obviously they weren't as extreme um, on the 169, but you can still get them. So the base models that you get are the active, so for example, I had a 1.1 active named Percy as my first car, and they come with black plastic bumpers, black plastic grill, very basic inside, for example, no 12 volt, none of that sort of jazz. You then get the um, dynamic, which is sort of the middle of the range. I believe you do get the painted bumpers. Can't remember if you get alloy wheels or not though. Uh, I think I, the thing is there's variations and options yeah, as well so because you could even spec an active with body colour bumpers if you wanted to. Yeah. Um, I can't actually remember if the Dynamic came to standard with alloys or not. So disregard but. it. <laughs> Dynamic's in the middle, Eleganza is at the top. So the Dynamic, um, so the Eleganza, dear me, would always come with, for example, your air conditioning and your alloy wheels. And what they would normally do on these cars would they put, and the early ones anyway, is they put a little badge at the front to let you know 
what your spec was. Um, this is a little spin-off one. This is the Eco. And obviously they released the Eco with the Jeep Attacks. Because if you go back and you look at your Active, your Dynamic, your Eleganza, the earlier ones, they are the more expensive tax brackets. Hence this car appealing to me so much. And also, for some reason, they threw the Eco in with the Aircon. And I wanted Aircon, so this spec was perfect for me. But we were just saying about those slightly more jazzy specials. For example, the Fiat Panda 4x4 Cross, which has these big inflated body panels on it, basically. And it comes in like three or four colours. It's a really cool looking car. They do tend to go for a little bit more of a premium, but they are capable cars off-road. There's the Alessi. Friends of ours, John, owns every colour specification of these. We will overlay a photo now. But that is a really cool special edition. It's also very very rare um, that you will see one and another one just to throw it out there is, for example is a Fiat Panda Mami which is basically bright orange with a bright orange interior but it's just a base spec Fiat Panda. I've completely forgotten two cars in the 169 lineup. Firstly though um, something to notice with the Eco is you get a slightly different grill and it is painted to the body colour as well and obviously it gets the bigger mirrors so that's how you can tell it's an Eco and fingers crossed it has aircon. I don't know if this one was specced with it, but I'm going to say I think they have aircon with them. So hopefully I'm giving you guys the right information. Um, but the two models of 169 I missed is the Fiat Panda 4x4. Um, so you will know I owned a Fiat Panda 4x4 55 plate named Pixie. Um, we really liked that car. It was a really cool car. And the other one is the Fiat Panda 100 horsepower with the 1.416 valve, which is a car I rave about. Um, but for reasons that we'll move on to a minute, I haven't ended up buying another one since I own my second one, which is near enough eight or nine years ago now. Point number seven, I'm going to mention, because if you do join into any of the Fiat Panda Facebook pages, it is a problem that is becoming more prominent. However, I would like to say it's becoming more prominent in the 100 horsepower models. And it's basically rust. Um, and I know you're probably all there going, oh, it's a Fiat, oh, they all rust. Yeah, I know, all my Fiats, are old Fiats anyway, have had rust. But I've owned four 169 examples now, and none of them have had rust. So it's just looking for the right example, which we'll move on to again, maybe in a point or two's time. But basically, the 100 horsepower, overlay a photo here to give you an example, has these big plastic extensions that go over the wheel arches, they go over the sills and everything. And unfortunately, it's trapping water in there, it's trapping dirt in there, and we are now finding in the, the Facebook pages anyway, me and Owen have seen it in person, we'll just say in a second, it's rusting out the cells, it's rusting out the body panels, unfortunately. Um, we do, do get rust in the normal 169 models as well, like this one, but it's just having a look. It's literally just having a look in the right places and making sure that it hasn't rusted where you think it's going to go. Um, basically, main areas to look out for with rust on a Fiat Panda 100 horsepower is the sills, um, rear axles. Rear axle, that's yeah. it. Obviously, if you go to a 4x4, you're looking at the rear cross subframe. Subframe, that's yeah. it, dear me. Um, we went to view 100 horsepower last year for me uh, before I bought the Saxo. Um, it was rusty everywhere. So what I will say is look everywhere because that car was rusty everywhere And that was before you can pull the trims off because those trims are glued onto the car Basically, they're very hard to get off and as soon as you get them off You could find rust under there. Unfortunately, it is a problem that's happening. Penny for example um, Her rear axle looks like it's been on this car for 14 years because this car is now 14 years old um, so what we're going to do is we're going to give it a proper sand back some point in the next few weeks and we're going to just underseal it. There's nothing wrong with it, but it's just something that we noticed when we went to go and view the car originally. Point number eight, um, parts availability. Parts availability is plentiful. Honestly, if you go on Facebook, you go on eBay, there will always be a couple of these about which are breaking. If you go for one that's in a rare colour like mine, then it is a bit more difficult because I've only ever seen one more come up in this colour unfortunately but I know people who could paint it it would be completely fine but you know just to give you guys an example I know that I can go and buy a Fiat Panda 100 horsepower badge on eBay for about 20-25 quid and you can get the rear badges for about 20 pounds per one um, it's cheaper to go with overlays which is what I'm going to do which is about a tenner so just to give you an example of parts they can be relatively easy to get I will say however if you own a cross body panels on that are expensive because there's not many of them left and 100 horsepowers do also pick up a premium however um i should have mentioned them when i was doing the rust fettle and finesse if you have a look on facebook they are on there 
they are helping to save pandas in particular they're helping to save 100 horsepowers that have suffered with this rust problem and i know they do do discounted panels on 100 horsepowers just to help them stay on the road which i think is a really good thing point number nine um which i vaguely went into when we were talking at the back of the car but running costs so this one for example the eco i said it comes with the 35 pounds a year road tax which is amazing i normally pay that every month for just one car as it is um fuel economy currently according to my trip as i said i've done about 47 mpg which i'm really happy with considering my route to work isn't just a straight blast it's like it's a pain but 47 mpg is about what i'm getting back and it cost me about 40 pounds to fill the car up from empty which i'm really really happy with insurance i'm not going to go into insurance because it varies per person you know where you live your points your everything blah 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 but it's cheap um mine isn't as cheap as it could be because obviously i've gone through about three or four cars on that insurance policy and i think they've had enough of me to be honest with you but it was a direct swap from the daihatsu cure which is obviously a 700 800 cc whatever it was i can't even remember to this which is a bigger engine so it does show you that the insurance is cheap as well um, and it is worth having a little look into it but i was really happy when i looked this up and it was a straight swap but yeah cheap to run um obviously i'm really happy with it and cheap to insure and tax as well i guess and point number 10, and I realise I've only really given you a handful of negatives. That's because I love this car. And point number 10 is the styling. This car has grown on me so much. And I know it was my first car, but I remember when I was given it as my first car and I literally went like this. Oh, thanks, mum. Because it was my mum's car and she gave it to me and went and got herself a new car. And she got herself a Ford Fusion because she said it looked like a big version of this car. She loved it so much. And I think the styling has aged really, really well. I can see where they've tried to keep the design cues of the 141 the more you think about it. Because whilst they've made it into a five door and the 141 was always a three door, they've tried to keep it boxy. They've tried to keep it a little bit retro. They've tried to keep it a little bit simple. And I like that they've stuck to those design cues of the previous pandas. And we are slightly seeing that again in the new grande panda that they're bringing out you can see that they are trying to hark back to the older cars i don't know if they're doing it particularly well i can't really make my mind upon that car but i think this looks really really good and when i park it up next to charmander i can't help but think that it's actually just a really nice looking car but i also like that it's an overlooked car because i park this up in a car park no one else gives two tosses about it but i go back to it and i go oh i really like it and that's what's important well, that about wraps it up for me and Penny. Um, again, this is the fourth Fiat Panda 169 I've owned. So just in case you guys are wondering, I can rattle this off really quickly. I had Percy, a 1.1 Active. I had Eve, who was a 100 horsepower. I had Pixie, who was a 4x4. And I have Penny, who is an Eco. And I've loved every single one of them. And no matter what people say about Fiat, you get all these fix it again tomorrow quotes and all these, oh, they're rubbish, blah, blah, blah. I've owned four and they've never given me a single problem. Bear in mind I've owned all those 141s as well, I've owned classic Fiat Pandas, they've never given me a serious problem. Bar the head gasket on Charmander, which might have been slightly self-inflicted by the fact I didn't fix it. But it kept going for nearly 15,000 miles, so that shows you something about the 1.2. I'm giving you a negative, but I'm also giving you a massive positive, because that engine would not die until I left it for two years. <laughs> so there you go. And also they're really easy to change, to be fair. If you're going to do a head gasket on an engine, I'd rather do a Citroen TU or a Fiat Fire, it's going to be one of them. Yeah, so yeah, exactly. they're, they're definitely easy to work on. Exactly. But yeah, we're really happy with Penny. Um, she was a really good purchase. She was a really well priced, to be honest with you. You go online, you can kind of get an idea of what we might have paid for this. It was well priced for the age and the mileage. Um, I will say it's all time for everyone to fight for Penny. So me and Owen um, have a few changes in circumstances with work. Nothing bad, it's just a few things might change for me in particular. And we're debating going down to one daily car. I know, crazy. But the idea is, it's basically Penny versus a few other cars. Um, so if you want, fight for Penny. We want Penny to stay. But we are also interested in a few of these other cars as well. We did go and look at one today. We actually really liked it apart from one sticking factor, which until we go and test drive this car, because we can't at the moment, we're not going to say anything else on the matter. But I might give you an idea of the age of the car, considering we can't test drive it right now. Um, but yeah, fight for Penny. We love Penny. I know Owen's actually really happy with his purchase for once because he's not recovering only every few weeks. Um, it just keeps going and going. And we love her. So yeah, 
hope this helps you guys out with maybe if you ever wanted to buy a fiat panda 169 if you've got any other questions that maybe i have missed because i do just rattle on a little bit when i do these sort of videos drop them in the comments below and we will be sure to help you out you've got ex fiat mechanic and just fiat lover from whenever my mum originally showed me her fiat panda 169 which was many many moons ago um but yeah <laughs> that's about it thanks for watching guys like comment and subscribe and we'll see you all in the next one